So with the summertime over and us getting a glimpse into what the rest of the year kind of looks like for the big three and then going into next year, I thought I wanted to make a video here just talking about PlayStation a little bit and Sony and what their future looks like. We talked about Nintendo with the Switch kind of, you know, on its last leg, you know, we're getting that new Switch probably next year and trying to see how the rest of the year goes for that system. Xbox had a great showcase kind of showing what their, you know, end of 2023 and then the next probably two to three years looks like. But the Sony showcase did leave us a little, you know, there's a lot of questions. There's a lot of stuff coming out, uh, a lot of, you know, confusion on where Sony wants to head for the future and what they're kind of looking at, where the marketplace stands in. Like no one knows for a fact where everyone will end up, but there are some concerns. So in today's video, I just want to kind of go over what do we know so far, how the PS5 has been performing, what Sony's plans are for the future, and then where do I think they'll actually end up. So if you're new to the channel, if you like PlayStation news, any type of gaming industry news, we got all that here for you on Manta XP. So make sure you do subscribe to the channel, leave a like and leave a comment down below and let's get into it right after this. So it's no secret to anyone that plays video games to know that Sony and PlayStation has been dominant and is a huge seller every time they come out. PlayStation 1, over 100 million copies. PlayStation 2, best selling system of all time with over 158 million copies. PlayStation 3, pretty good, a little around 87. PlayStation 4 dominated the last generation with the Xbox One and the Wii U not doing that well. And now the PS5 is also shaping up to be one of the best selling systems of all time. Going from the PlayStation 4 where you had games like God of War 2018, uh, Uncharted, all these games coming out and really dominating the space. Plus you had the Call of Duty, you know, marketing deal. There was only, there was nowhere to go but up for Sony. So going into the PS5, coming out in November, you know, 2020, the year pretty much over. There wasn't a lot coming out, but 2021 was pretty strong for PlayStation 5. You had games like Miles Morales, even though it was, you know, cross-gen, but still PS5. Uh, you had Ratchet and Clank, A Rift Apart, very good game. Returnal, very good game. Deathloop and Ghostwire Tokyo, which were, you know, timed exclusive. So PlayStation 5 had a really good start in 2021. So did Xbox as well, you know, with Halo Infinite, Psychonauts 2, Flight Simulator, uh, Forza Horizon 5, games like that. But PlayStation definitely looked to continue that momentum from the PlayStation 4. Then we go into 2022, and then it kind of slows up a little bit, but the games that come out are still high quality. You start off the year with Gran Turismo 7. Now, there were some complaints about this game with the online servers and things like that, but still, the movie's coming out this year. A lot of people have been buying the actual, you know, seat that you could drive in your house and the steering wheel and everything like that, so I'd call it a success. It sold a lot of copies. You had Horizon Forbidden West, the follow-up to Horizon Zero Dawn, which did really well as well. You had God of War Ragnarok, which was a lot of people's game of the year that year. You had Stray, which was a timed exclusive, and then you also had the questionable Last of Us remake, which, I mean, still sold a lot of copies, looked great, and then tied in with the show, and that's the other part of, you know, where Sony's been going. They've had the Last of Us show, they have a God of War show in the works, there's going to be a Horizon show, they got Twisted Metal out already, so things, again, they're branching out to that multimedia, they're even getting games to come out on PC. now. Those games have not been performing well as far as graphics and fidelity and things like that go and crashes, but Sony's really showing to, you know, finally stop being stubborn and kind of, you know, branch out into these other avenues. But then we hit to 2023 and things kind of didn't start the best. So you had Forspoken, you know, another time exclusive from Square Enix, which I mean, the amount of money they spent on this game, I think it was somewhere around $100 million and it just wasn't making that money back now i haven't played it myself so i can't you know bash it but a lot of people just talked about the game kind of being aimless and empty like it had a good concept but it just wasn't hidden you know where it was supposed to hit especially being like a big you know triple a budget game but you know some sales have come by people have been picking up the game some people are okay with it but again not to the standards of where a square enix you know, AAA game should be. Then we got the timed exclusive again from Square Enix, but these timed exclusives from Square Enix end up just <laughs> staying on PlayStation forever. But you got Final Fantasy 16, which 
I'm playing through right now. I am enjoying it. Again, I'm not a huge Final Fantasy fan, but I did like Final Fantasy VII Remake. I'm looking forward to Rebirth as well. And 16 is pretty good. It's more action oriented, but, you know, the sales aren't exactly where Square Enix says they want it to be. But again, it still sold 3 million copies in its first week. So that's not bad at all. And then what a lot of people are most hyped for for video games for the rest of the year is Spider-Man 2. You got uh, Peter and Miles in the game. You got Venom. You got a lot you got Craven the Hunter you got a lot going on for Spider-Man 2 and that's going to be a lot of people's game of the year as well dropping in October but outside of that it's it's been kind of quiet for Sony even going into next year so we're going to kind of look at what is Sony's strategy moving forward and what they want to do so a big complaint has kind of been these you know remakes that seem kind of unnecessary you know Nintendo's been doing a few you got uh, Metroid Prime Remastered, which isn't a remake, but a remaster, but that's 20 years later after the game came out. You got Super Mario RPG Remake, but that's like 25 years after the original came out. But Sony's been kind of putting out remakes, you know, very soon after they came out. Like, like I said, Last of Us Remake came out less than 10 years after the original game came out. There's there's rumors that Last of Us Part 2 remake is about to come out. And that game came out three years ago. You had Demon Souls launch on the PS5, which was not that old as well. And then there's even been rumors of a Horizon Zero Dawn remake. So again, the, the PS5 and Xbox series are great consoles, but they're not pushing the limits so much where these remakes need to keep getting put out. It's not like the GameCube to the Switch or the PS1 to the PS4, like the jumps in graphical, you know, fidelity and things like that. Like even right now, a lot of these systems aren't being fully taken advantage of. So all these remakes coming out, it's, it's kind of, you know, raises an eyebrow and I get, you know, with them branching off to kind of go into these other medias like the last of us show right that's supposed to come back season two i think 2025 or 2026 who knows that will probably tie into that remake coming out so i get it from that perspective but you kind of you don't want to end up in like a pokemon situation where the game the movie the cards everything got to come in a you know specific schedule and then you're locked into that and now you're forced to you know you kind of become a slave to your own production it's a great idea but when it works, it's great. When it doesn't, it's, you know, you're kind of, your hands are kind of tied at that point. But now let's talk about Sony's overall strategy for, as far as PlayStation goes in the future. And that is live service. And I have so many questions on this because, you know, when you chase trends, and I did a whole video about different gaming trends and how they come and go, but live service has been the you know, kind of bread and butter for a lot of these companies to just make a bunch of money so you can spend money on, you know, other things and other avenues. You know, we've seen the success of Fortnite. We've seen the success of Destiny, which led to Sony purchasing Bungie uh, last year for $3.6 billion. And, but the live service thing, it's, we've seen these games come and go. We've seen Rumbleverse. We've seen uh, multiverses come on and then disappear after a little while. We've seen Avengers, the uh, live service game, and these games cost a lot of money. Like they get a lot of investors, but there's licenses, there's all these kind of things, and they just they don't last. Like the, it's it's the it's such a high risk, high reward situation because the money you get from these games are great. Like Grand Theft Auto Online has been sustaining for around ten years now. You know Fortnite's been going on for a while, getting new collabs and things like that, but Sony and Jim Ryan has said that they plan to spend around like 55 to 60 percent of their gaming budget over the next few years on live service games. And I just think that's kind of crazy. Like they plan to put out, they said, t around 10 games between now and March 2026, which was a big reason for them to sign Bungie last year because Destiny is super popular. You got Marathon coming out soon and... While that will be multi-platform, Bungie did say, you know, they are not into being, you know, console exclusive and all that. They're fine being owned by Sony and working as far as partnership, but they want to be independent as far as how they make their games and everything like that. But and the other thing is we've heard there was supposed to be a like Last of Us Factions, like live service game that wasn't at the state of play and allegedly was supposed to come out this year. But we got Naughty Dog coming out saying, you know, 
it's not so there's been some development issues with it like there's a lot going on with that and again it raises a question of like like naughty dog is one of your biggest first but some people argue it's your best first party studio maybe them and insomniac are like right there holding up playstation insomniac kind of puts out games over and over again so they kind of you know keep playstation alive but i don't know it's like it's already starting to look kind of scary as far as this live service initiative that they're trying to do the only way to pay for that kind of stuff is these live service games no games really have the cash flow to just you know i mean microsoft kind of does but you don't have that money to just be spending on games that don't you know pan out well so the live service aspect is kind of just to have that you know money printing machine just just to fuel everything else and you know if it helps them come up with you know passion projects and you know keep making better games then i'm all for it i just don't want us to get to this bubble of games just costing 500 million minimum for triple a games and it's it's not worth it at the end of the day now in the near future we did get at the state of play a reveal of a project q console as place as sony is calling it and a lot of people are flaming this thing man it's, it's kind of looks like it's supposed to compete with like the steam deck and all these other handheld devices but it's really looks like a kindle fire or an android just in the middle of two dual sense you just cut a dual sense control and put it in the middle and i don't know how this thing's gonna sell i mean the concept is kind of cool but it's the fact that it's cloud-based like it's only based on when you're near your playstation and you're on the same wi-fi that you can play the games on the system there you can't play it natively if you're not in the house or you're not near your ps5 it's not like the steam deck in that regard so it's kind of like what are what is the point of this thing like who asked for it how much is it going to cost i mean you got psvr2 that they're pushing money into and things like that but i don't know sony's making a lot of questionable choices and i mean just based off the success of their first party and the amount of playstation consoles they sell maybe they have money to try a lot of these different things but I don't know it's, it's left a big question mark and then the next part of that was there's been rumors of a ps5 pro potentially coming out next year but the pro isn't being described as a you know normally it'll be like a slimmer version or maybe like a it plays certain games other systems can't play or maybe higher graphics and things like that but there's been conflicting reports some of it is saying hey it's gonna be just like the digital system but then you buy a detachable hard drive or detachable disk drive just to play games on it which you know kind of leads to this all digital future that we're heading towards and then there's people saying it might be like 8k but i mean there's 8k on the playstation 5 box but like who has an 8k tv nowadays i mean it's just a lot again and it's just rumors but until we get actual you know news of this thing directly from sony who knows it's just again it's, it's a lot of head scratching going around and then looking ahead to the future again we don't have a lot of information on what's going to come out we assume a new god of war would come up who knows when i mean there's been it's been four years between 2018 and ragnarok so that may not come out till what 2026 maybe maybe 2027 you know near the end of the playstation 5's life we got, you know, Wolverine coming, what we assume to be next year. You know, Insomniac's kind of been on a nice schedule of putting out a game every year or every other year. So that should be pretty good. I'm look, I'm definitely looking forward to Wolverine coming out. We've got Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, which is the second game in the trilogy of the Final Fantasy VII Remake uh, trilogy that's supposed to come out early next year. And then we also have... The, a new single player game unnamed that we don't know from Naughty Dog that should be coming out. So some people think it might be Last of Us 3. There's been reports of The Last of Us 2 remake. So again, we, a, a lot of thing is secretive. So, But those are my thoughts on the state of PlayStation. You know, of course, this generation, you know, just off brand, brand name, PlayStation is going to be okay. They're not going to, you know, lose money, a bunch of money. They're not going to go under or anything like that. But, you know, the tides are kind of turning as far as how popular Nintendo is, Xbox making that big acquisition, Game Pass and things like that. So 
who knows what's going to happen. I mean, it's it's a lot. It's a lot that's up in the air, but all we can do is wait and see. I'm not too optimistic about it, to be honest, but, you know, who am I? I'm, I'm not in these rooms. They, they may have a grandmaster plan that I have no idea what, like, who am I? You know what I mean? But that's pretty much all my thoughts on the uh, state of PlayStation and Sony and where I think they're going to head in the future. But y'all let me know down below. What do you think? Are you happy with how PlayStation is? What do you think their future is going to look like? Let me know in the comment section below. Leave a like on this video, of course. Subscribe if you have not already. We're almost at 500 subscribers on the road to 1,000. So I appreciate everybody that has subscribed so far. And welcome to the new subscribers. But I appreciate you guys, and I'll catch you guys on the next video. Peace.